Good evening all and welcome. I have some absolutely huge news. We have just finished developing the Mortis Media app, a place where you can listen to over a hundred hours of my old stories, organized by type and, well, it's there for your enjoyment really. We're currently looking for beta testers from our members and or patrons. So if you are one and have an Android phone specifically, not Apple, um, please reach out, let me know via email or patron, and um, we'll see if we can hook you up with the beta testing. Just please give us feedback and let us know how it is. Once we have finished sorting it out, it will be available to everyone else, so patience. But for now, it's time to get comfortable and let the darkness take control. I was a teenager, and I just up and decided that I wanted to stay at my great uncle's hunting camp one night. It's deep in the woods, bordering state forest land, and there are gravel roads through most of the mountains in my state, and they're very convenient if you want to camp away from people, but still have reasonable access. The last two miles of the road to his camp are totally washed out, so the last bit of my trip would be on foot but I was in the mood for a wood stove and a late night walk. The moon was out, and though it wasn't full, it was good enough to see by, so long as I wasn't under tree cover. It was set to be a beautiful night. I told my dad where I was going and hopped into my tiny 2002 Hyundai accent and drove off. I eventually got to the turnoff and started into the mountains. I had about 45 minutes of driving in the darkness left until I'd eventually reached the right fork which would take me to the nondescript dirt road that acted as the camp's driveway. There are dozens of roads that crisscross and connect to each other, and often themselves in any given section of state forest land. You can very nearly cross my state using only mountain roads and Amish country. Driving is one of my hobbies and I know huge swaths of forest by memory. And so, I knew that when I reached a certain turn that I would begin to follow a creek down into a narrow valley. The road was steep enough that I would need to reduce gear. The accent only had second gear to help, where first would have been better, so occasionally pumping my brakes was necessary to keep a safe speed. People tend to go way too fast on these gravel roads and then go sliding off into the trees when they have to evade or slow down. I was averaging about 24 miles an hour when I gently applied my brake and checked my rear view mirror out of habit. And there was some pale, floppy, hairless thing on all fours running about 10 feet behind my bumper, washed in the red of my brake lights and partially obscured by the trail column of dust from my tires and the vibration of my rear view mirror attached to the windshield. It was like my heart stopped. I almost ran off the road right there. I jerked the wheel as I slammed the brakes and skidded a bit. But that loping thing suddenly closed the distance on my rear bumper in a heartbeat. I released a truly horrified shudder and hit the gas out of reflex, which of course meant that the taillights were no longer illuminating the thing. I cannot accurately describe to you just how quickly I went from perfectly content to the greatest state of terror I have ever experienced. I was gripping the wheel so tightly, I could no longer feel my hands. My entire body was trembling. I was trying to drive with my peripheral vision while mostly glued to the rear view occasionally stealing glances back to the twisting road before me. I could see hints of motion somewhere in the darkness. I almost ran myself off the road again, and I literally had to order myself aloud to look at where I was going so that I didn't kill myself. My body was thrumming. I was probably going at 40, and the road straightened out, and the tree cover thinned out a bit, creating patches of pale light. My eyes were adjusting to the brightness of the headlights, so this wasn't much, but it was enough to catch a glimpse of the receding fleshy form still pursuing me. 
By the next bend, I could no longer tell if the creature was still behind. I did not stop at the road leading to the camp. I didn't stop at the one after, nor the one after that. I kept driving for another hour, taking an incredibly inefficient and winding road that eventually led me out of the forest on the opposite side of my home. I had chosen roads that were steep for instance, because maybe it would slow the thing down and it wouldn't be able to catch up as easily. What I did next was truly irrational though. I drove for yet another hour on the interstate, then doubled back home using regular roads through the various towns I had passed along the way, making big loops and redundant turns. I had not been interested in horror in general up until this point, and this experience awoke something in me. To this day, I will go on night drives and never not feel scared. I was also a fairly skeptical person by nature, so this was also a deeply disturbing experience on a whole other level. And four months later, I saw a picture of a bear with mange on the internet. And suddenly, everything was perfectly clear. I was somewhere in the middle of the White Mountains in summer, when I walked into what looked like a scene from a horror movie. A person with zero hiking slash camping or any other experience had gotten themselves into big trouble. It was around 7am when I found the campsite. First thing that hit me was the eerie stillness until I noticed the shredded tent under a tree, and the desperate looking human figure covered in blood, whimpering quietly. I put my own bag down, grabbed my kit, and went over to the person. They looked like they had just lost a knife fight with a four-armed man. Deep slashes from one shoulder to hip, single punctures up and down his back, and hands and forearms full of what looked like defensive cuts. I patched him up as best I could, gave him water, checked my map, and hightailed it to the closest road. This was before cell phones were super prevalent and barely worked in the mountains. Thankfully, the road was very nearby, under two miles, and I was able to flag someone down. They took off, and I waited for assistance to arrive. It took about a half hour until rescue got there, and I led them to the still unidentified individual. He was not very conversive when I helped him out. I was sure he would be dead before we arrived, but I was wrong. I assisted rescue bringing him out, and took them up on their offer to head into town and get cleaned up. After cleaning up and getting myself situated at their station, I went on my way leaving them my number and to call me to let me know what was up with the person we helped out. I got home three days later, and there was a message on my machine. The story was that the guy I found decided to go camping one day and heard that he had to keep food hung from a tree to keep bears away. Well, he did that, but put it almost directly over his tent, and not high enough. The night before it happened upon the site, a bear had used the tent and its occupant in an attempt to climb the tree to get the food. The guy had woken up to four black bear paws sinking into his body, shifting up to reach. The dude survived and swore to the hospital that he was moving to the city, I would never go into the woods again. I like to hike in really deep woods, finding all railroads and stuff. Pennsylvania game lands have lots of old narrow gorge tracks from the logging days. We had some interesting finds. I once found a wreath made of vines and antlers on a tree in SGL 60. I looked out of there real quick. And another time I followed an old road in SGL 158, till it disappeared into the woods. There was abandoned stuff everywhere. Logging equipment, metal barrels, chains, gave me the creeps for some reason. Probably because I watched Annihilation the night before. Well, I was on the Appalachian Trail in Maine and got chased by something. It sounds stupid, but I honestly don't know what it was. My brother and I were exploring a trail after setting up camp, and we saw movement about 10 yards away, and something came screaming and screeching out of the underbrush. It was short and brown, but I didn't even get a good look at it. 
It might have been a chupacabra or a chicken, and I just remember running faster than I'd ever had before, hand on my big knife and unclipping it. Imagine if it were like a grouse and I killed myself tripping and landing on my knife. After a hundred yards, we stopped and wheeled around, knives out and panting hard. It wasn't behind us. Still no idea what it was, but I wasn't a fan. One out of 10, would not recommend to friends. Of the countless hours I've spent in the wood, this is the only time, the only few seconds, I can't explain. I distance hike when I can. Sometimes this means getting up early or staying out late to get as many miles in as possible. Sometimes walking in the pitch dark with a low light headlamp gets spooky. I grew up in the woods of this area. I've slept under our canopy of stars more nights than I can count. And I've trekked thousands of miles of trails, riverbanks, lake shores, ridges, bottoms, bogs and creeks. I've hunted the game. I'm establishing this because it's important you understand I've heard, seen, and smelt about all this region has to offer in the way of wilderness. My scariest experience though, happened at about 4.30 in the morning. It was late spring. So the first morning light wouldn't be visible in the treetops for another 30 to 45 minutes. Another hour past that until sunrise. I was on mile five. I'm in a low bottom that's wedged between two steep ridges. The trail I'm on was narrow, muddy, and completely hemmed in by a thick underbrush. Young maple, an old oak growth, and I'm focused on the small light from my headlamp, just one step after the other, zoned out. Then I hear a crack, and I froze solid. In this part, I have trouble describing 4.30 in springtime. It means I'm the only thing making noise. There's no birds chirping, nothing. It's dead quiet. I froze mid-step. When fight or flight kicks in, you have these immediate instinctual thoughts. The first thought that instantly flashed in my mind as I stood there balancing myself in silence was, if I hear that again, I'm turning around and I'm going back the way I came in a hurry. Why? Because that sound was not a branch breaking. It wasn't deadfall. It wasn't a widow maker. I was damn sure I had just heard something intentional. Hearing it twice? Well, that meant I gotta get out of there. To describe it as best I can, it sounded like a decent sized wooden stick being violently whacked against a smallish tree. More a fungo bat sized stick than a baseball bat. The distinction in my head being that this sound was a crack and not a thud or thump. I have described it as explosive in the past because it was so sudden and terribly loud. I had the sense that it was about 50 yards directly in front of me and it was loud and clear. Now, as I stood there completely spooked, I realized the soon to be worst part of my situation. I knew where the sound came from and I knew where the trail went. In about 30 yards, I was going to come to an 180 degree turn and start up the ridge going away from the creek. This meant, as soon as I got the courage to move towards the noise, I was going to have to turn my back to it and get up that ridge. This made me very nervous. My head somewhere between meth fiend murder and Bigfoot bludgeoning. Minutes pass. I just breathe my foggy breath into my glasses and listen. There's nothing, dead quiet. And I've got about 20 to 30 minutes until first light. I crank up the headlamp and start to slowly creep to the 180 turn. When you wear a headlamp in the woods at night, every tree branch in front of you casts a big black moving shadow on the trail and it didn't help. I get to the turn and quickly make the bend. I'm moving pretty fast at this point, trying to be quiet, taking tiny shallow breaths so I can listen while humping it up the trail. 
And then I smell it. A stench hits me that I can't describe. I just imagined wet, rotten death. I've actually worked scenes where humans have expired in a past life as a firefighter. And this was like days old decomposition. But it smelled strange. I kept walking fast. By the time I made it to the top of the ridge, I was huffing and the first light was showing. I didn't stop moving until full light was out and the birds were chirping. I've heard it in all our woods. I've smelled it all. And I'm telling you, I don't know what the hell that was. Deadfall and especially leafed out branches make a lot of noise on the way down. I've heard it many times. I don't know. I am a wildlife biologist. And one of my duties is monitoring owls in the middle of the night. To do this, you have to walk along trails in the dead of night. Sometimes I'm out until 2 to 3am bear in mind, and stop periodically to play owl calls and listen for them to respond. Usually, this is done with a partner. But I work for a chronically underfunded state agency. So I do the surveys alone. I do my surveys in redwood forests pretty far from civilization. So the forest is silent and pitch black. Sometimes the trees creak and moan, which is scary as hell. But honestly, the scariest part of my job is humans. Lots of creepy stuff happens when I do our surveys. But the creepiest I'm about to share. I was hiking down a defunct branch of a well used trail at around midnight. The trail was cut into a steep slope. And there was a wide river on the other side of the trail that followed for about a mile until it joined with the main trail. It was about three stations into my survey. And I stopped for my next station. The owl calls are on a pre recorded tape played fairly loud. And at one point, there's an ear splitting shriek. And I always plug my ears for that part. So I plug my ears and when I remove my hands, I hear the tail end of a scream on the other side of the river. Not an owl, not a rabbit, not a fox, nothing I've ever heard before. I literally stopped breathing. And after that scream, a man shouts, kind of a moaning shout, maybe in pain. I wasn't sure. Maybe this was the wrong thing to do. But I packed up my wildlife caller and ran the hell out of there, never finished the survey, and reported it to USFWS as survey interrupted by human activity. And next time just called that area from my truck on the main trail, with the volume cranked up. Me and my sister would take long trips into deep woods surrounding our secluded home. At a certain spot in the journey, a German Shepherd without a collar would run out of nowhere and greet us. He was a fully grown dog and very friendly. He would follow us around for a bit, and then continue on his way. Well, one day we went out like any other day, except our friend wasn't showing up. We didn't think too much of it until we found his body. It looked like he had been attacked by wolves with how ripped apart he was. But it didn't look like the animal ate very much of my doggy friend at all, just sort of tore him up and left. Later, we kept walking and talking about it until I hear a weird sound come from the distance. It sounded like what I can only describe as maybe a large animal moaning with a sense of pain or confusion. It was far at first, but when we heard it, we stopped to listen. We couldn't hear leaves moving, but I heard it again this time noticeably closer. The sound of a wailing animal, but it seemed more aggressive sounding this time. Then we hear it again. But it's directly on the other side of the hill that we're at. It was bone chilling, almost like a dying woman. Me and my sister bolted out of there without even thinking about each other, just sprinting all the way back to the trail that would take us home. Sometimes I wish I had stayed to see what it was. But I'm good with the outcome of living. 
This happened to some friends of mine in Sydney, Australia, when we wanted to go underage drinking. We would go buy a case of beer or bottle of spirits and hike about four kilometers into the bush to the middle of nowhere to drink without worrying about getting into trouble. We would sleep in a sleeping bag under the stars in summer and be fine. So one afternoon, my friends without me this time head off with beer to the usual camp spot we'd use. Being young and stupid, no one checked the weather forecast, otherwise they would have known the heavy rain was on the way. In the middle of the night, five drunk teenagers left the campsite to shelter in caves nearby. The caves sit high up, overlooking a large fork in the Hawkesbury River. Soaked from the rain and cold, they start to dig a fire pit. Unfortunately, they dig up human remains and were too drunk to return home, so spent a miserable night in the rain waiting for dawn, didn't dare stay anywhere near the caves. The police investigated and discovered the remains were in a very old Aboriginal burial site and were relocated to avoid being accidentally disturbed again. I was hiking across Newfoundland following an old railway that was long ago disassembled and turned into a giant trail, sleeping wherever I found myself at night. One day I ran into a small cottage town, except everything was abandoned. Trailers falling apart, bus conversions burnt out, small cabins all shuttered up. It was creepy but interesting at the same time. The sun was warning, so I decided to set up camp in a mostly empty lot then had an abandoned truck slowly falling into a ravine near it. I cooked up some food and crawled into my tent to sleep. I woke up sometime in the night and heard footsteps outside it. At first, I think it's an animal, but the steps sound like someone walking, a human. The steps get closer and go around my tent. I slowly and quietly pull out my knife if he tries to get in, and my plan is to stab first and ask questions later. Anyone trying to get into my tent at night in the middle of nowhere is looking to do some kind of harm. My heart is racing at this point, but I just try to be quiet. Luckily, the steps start moving back from the tent until I can't hear them anymore. I wait a bit to see if they'll come back, but I don't hear anything. I slowly get out of my tent, don't see anything, and without turning my flashlight on, I quickly take everything and stuff it into my bag. After that, I start walking down the trail and get the hell out of there. I walked until daylight, came across a road and flagged down a truck. The guy was nice and drove me to town where I got a hotel. The creepy thing was, when I think back to it, Whoever that was, was likely watching me walk into town from one of the abandoned structures. I'm guessing a squatter. I'd like to think he was just curious, but I'm glad I didn't stay and wait to see if he'd be back. This happened about two years ago. The anniversary of it is actually coming up, because it happened on my friend's birthday. The day started off with the four of us hanging out. James, Brian and Timmy. It was James's birthday. We all four had hung out at the local park at the large river next to it, and a local hiking trail that ran alongside it. The hiking trail had a long history of being an old train railroad and all kinds of things. At around 9pm, Brian and Timmy decided it was time to go home and left me and James at the park. Me and James's idea was to camp out in the woods that was next to the park for the night, since we had a secret camp spot there. I say secret loosely, since all the neighborhood teens also camped out there and partied. Me and James began to set up camp there and attempted to start a fire, but since it had been raining the past few days, the wood was way too wet for it to start. At the time, James got a call from Brian, he answered it, and at first he had a weird look on his face. He then took the phone from his face and put the phone on speaker. Can you both hear me? Brian said. We both said yes. We could also hear Timmy in the background. All right, well, me and Timmy just saw something really weird. We asked him what he saw. 
He looked like a person running on all fours. I sat there puzzled and asked what was so weird about it. Because it was running across the river by you guys' campsite. We quickly packed up and left the campsite. Surely we thought maybe they were joking, but both Brian and Timmy have never been known to lie. We decided to walk around the town for a few hours, until we somehow ended up walking on the hiking trail that ran by the river. It was around 3am now, and we were starting to come up to a tight bend on the trail, to where you couldn't see that well in front of you. It already being night, and the trail being littered with trees on both sides, as we were turning the bend, we both heard a very odd noise. I'm still not exactly sure how to describe it, it's almost like you would describe a young lady crying, but throw in a wicked laugh in there as well. I don't even know if that does it justice, but as we fully came through the bend, the path turned slightly, and we both stopped in our tracks standing about 50 feet in front of us, seeing what could only be described as an elongated grey humanoid thing on all fours slightly crawling towards us. It had no hair anywhere on its body. We both quickly turned back around and I have never run so fast in my life. We didn't say a single word. We just ran the two miles back to my house. We rarely talk about it anymore. Only that neither of us can describe the sound we heard that night, or what we saw. Keep in mind my friend is a hard skeptic in anything paranormal or supernatural related. This happened to one of my friends. He and two of his buddies decided to go camping one weekend in the Uinta Mountains in Utah. They wanted to go out in the middle of nowhere to really get away from civilization and just chill and fish and stuff like that. All three of them are pretty outdoorsy and experienced with camping and backpacking, so this was no big deal for them. They went to a trailhead in the Uintas, hiked about half a mile up the trail and then turned off the trail and just hiked for four miles away. They had little trail markers so that they wouldn't be lost coming back and they found a spot, and there was no sign of anyone around. The ground looked untouched by humans, and there was also a brook nearby, so they decided to set up camp. All three of them had camping hammocks, so they set those up in the trees, and then just kind of explored around for a bit before they decided to build a fire and eat. Eventually, the evening rolled around, so they built a fire and made tin foil dinners, and were just chatting. When they decided to go to bed, the guy who told me this said he remembered laying in his sleeping bag in his hammock, thinking that even though there was the sound of water in the brook nearby, they couldn't hear any sounds like insect noises or whatever. That the woods were eerily quiet. Like being out of civilization made him realize how rarely we as humans experience real silence, since we all fill our days with so many noises and distractions. It felt eerie. He could feel himself start to doze off when the worst thing in the world happened to him. He had to pee when he was already comfortable and warm. He figured he'd rip the bandaid off and go pee before he fell asleep for the night. He put on his headlamp, got out of his hammock and walked about 30 feet away from his buddies in their hammocks to pee. When he was walking over, he thought he saw something dart out of sight unnaturally fast and heard a crack of a branch, but because they were so far out in the wilderness, near a brook, he didn't think too much of it. He unzipped his pants, peed, and then right when he was zipping his pants back up, his headlamp shone on something on the ground that paralyzed him with fear. A few feet away, where he had just been peeing, there was the unmistakable mark of fresh human footprints on the ground. It had rained in the mountains the day before, so the earth was soft in some areas, and there was no doubt in his mind that these were not only human footprints, but that whoever had made them was barefoot. The creepiest thing was that the footprints weren't staggered, they were side by side, facing where the guys were camping. It was as though someone was just standing still at the edge of their campsite, in total darkness watching them. Those were the only footprints my friend could see, no other prints leading to or away from them. He totally freaked out, 
ran back to his hammock and got his knife that he always takes camping. He loudly whispered to his two friends, but they were already asleep, so they didn't answer. He debated whether he should wake them up, but decided against it because there was no real physical threat he could think of that would justify waking them up. He put his headlamp on a brighter setting, and shone it up in the trees and around the general area of where he'd peed. Nothing. He didn't sleep that night. He laid in his hammock wide awake with his knife in his hand the entire night. The footprints looked as though someone had been standing there moments before he walked up to the spot to pee, and he felt like he and his friends were not alone. When it reached early in the morning, when the sun just barely started to rise, my friend decided he was going to pack his stuff up, because he was still spooked and wanted to start hiking back to their car when his friends were up. When he was taking down the hammock, he saw another set of fresh footprints, but this time they were 10 feet away, like on the edge of the trees behind his hammock. As if someone had been standing about 10 feet away from it, just staring at him. Again, no footprints leading to these two other footprints. He was full on freaked out at this point, so he woke up his friend and showed them the footprints, and they got the hell out of there. Sometimes, you're not as alone as you think you are. This happened five or six years ago. I had just moved to Arizona from California to live with my sister after a divorce. Within a year, I landed a job at a grocery store, brought a car from my sister, and was finally getting my life back on track. I've never had friends, not for a lack of trying, and that was also something that never changed. I have that wild and free nature, so I grew up enjoying taking overnight trips on my own. Once in a while I'd get a hotel room, but usually I'd sleep in my car, or at a truck stop, or a campground to save money, and enjoy the thrill of danger and freedom. I'm a 5 foot 2 female, with no muscle, and was in my early 20s during the time that this story took place. I decided I needed to have some form of protection on me during my lone trips, so shelled out 600 bucks on a 9mm revolver. I really hoped that I'd never need to use it, and that I was just wasting my money. One day I decided to try out a campground called Burrow Creek Campground. I arrived after it had gotten dark, paid for two nights and found a nice spot to sleep in my car. When morning came, I realized just how empty the place was. I was one of maybe two or three people that were staying there, and I was the only female. I grabbed my backpack, put my revolver into it, and walked until I found the trail leading to the creek. My first surprise was walking around a bush, only to find myself face to face with a burrow. Behind him stood a big cow that I did not want to get too close to. I slowly walked away from them, careful not to startle them. That's when I saw the creek. It was green, foul, and full of bugs. Disappointing, but I expected as much after reading the reviews online. I continued onwards, swinging my backpack around to unzip it so that I could quickly grab my gun if I ran into any danger. I was there for adventure, and wasn't going to let a cow or foul creek stop me from continuing on. Ahead, I spotted some trees. As I walked closer, I could hear a voice behind them. I stopped heart racing, but I figured if someone was talking, then it must be two or more people just enjoying a hike. Nothing to fear, right? I brushed it off and carried on. Within a minute, a man emerged from behind the trees, alone catching me off guard. I can't quite remember what the man looked like, other than he was middle-aged and white. He walked right up to me and said, It's not often you see pretty girls out here alone. I let out a nervous laugh unsure how to react. He asked if I was here with my boyfriend and I said yes. Yes, he's a... Uh... Then I looked up to the mountain where the main road was and pointed. He went up for some groceries, he'll be back at any moment. I'm sure he knew I was lying. I am an awful liar. And then he asked if we were staying at the campground, grinning big, as he had been during the whole encounter up until this point. Like an idiot, I say yes. And suddenly his grin turned upside down. He was suddenly very angry, and marched past me without a word. 
To defuse the situation and hide my fear, I turned around, waved and told him to have a nice day. But he said nothing and carried on marching away angrily. That's when I found a bush and ducked down behind it, pulling my gun out to have it ready should I need it. I was shaking. What was the strange man gonna do? Why did it make him so angry that I was staying in the campground with my pretend boyfriend? After all, he wasn't angry about the pretend boyfriend, only that we were staying there. I had to get back to my car, but the only way back was in the same direction that he was traveling and I had no choice. I kept my gun in my hand as I walked along the creek. There were a few trees, so it was best to walk if I didn't want to be seen in that area. Plus, there was no way he'd be crossing that nasty creek, and there wasn't anything on the other side except the mountain. That meant I only had to watch him on my left side, and I didn't see him again. Once back to my campsite, I sat on the picnic table and decided what to do. I paid for two nights after all, and I had only stayed for one. As I was pondering this, a much older man walked by with his dog. He was chatting with me as he was heading down to the creek in nothing but his swimming trunks. Instead of using the trail that was further down, he went through my campsite to go down a steep, rocky ledge. He was talking about how he can't go get down there and swim the creek. Yes, the green, foul, bug-infested one. It was at that moment that I knew I needed to leave. I hurriedly got into my car and looked out of there. All I could think of was, if only I had been dressed like a man, maybe the men wouldn't have bothered me, and I'd been able to enjoy my second night. About a year later, I went to my local Great Clips and asked them to cut my long, thick, beautiful hair down to a short mohawk with the side shaved. Since then, I've kept it short, wear a backwards baseball cap and a men's shirt, and I've been mistaken for a guy on numerous occasions. Being called Sir or freaking women out as I enter the female bathrooms, only for them to realize I am indeed a woman. Men don't bother me anymore. If any of you have any ideas of why that strange man became angry, I'd love to hear your thoughts. It continues to baffle me to this day. I was camping up in Herber, Arizona, with my brothers and my dad. I was 15 or so at the time, and we were deep in the woods, far from most other camps. Me and my brother had our own tent, while my dad had a separate one not far off. He likes to give us our privacy while we're camping, and we would usually run around a bit at night before going to bed, entering our camp to sleep at around 11. One night we were playing hide and seek when we heard a branch snap a few yards from us. We assumed it was an elk or something, since they were pretty common in our area and we would typically go to our tent if we saw one in hopes of not agitating it. So that's what we did. I called for my youngest brother who was still hiding and he revealed himself to be hiding behind a branch pile not super far from where the noise originated. We went to the tent and I decided since it was already pretty late that we should just go to sleep. The next morning I went to check the spot for elk prints since I found them pretty fascinating. Instead, I found large cat prints. I knew they were cat prints because they had the four toe pads and the large center pad, as well as no claw marks. I was honestly kind of excited. I had always wanted to see a mountain lion or bobcat in the wild, but it never happened. Knowing that I was closer to either one was very thrilling. It then occurred to me that my youngest brother was hiding separated from us, scarily close to the paw print location. It occurred to me that if that was a hungry mountain lion and it had taken notice of my six-year-old brother hiding alone, it may have possibly taken the chance. We stopped doing hide and seek at night to avoid these types of situations and we actually set up a roll call system to ensure everyone was together at night. Now I know a mountain lion likely wouldn't have done anything had it seen him. But still, the risk felt very real, and I worry that had I not heard it, I could have lost my brother. My partner and I were deep in Mount Adams Wilderness area in Washington State, and there were no other camps around. 
We had spent the day fishing and exploring the creek around our camp. When at 2am he wakes me up and tells me to be quiet. Our little dog is growling quietly and looking in one direction. About 15 yards north of the tent, I can hear rustling and a woman's voice speaking quietly to herself but couldn't discern any words. There's no light, just the voice and the walking noise. It goes quiet and then picks back up on the other side of the tent, which is even deeper in the woods, and it fades off into the dense forest. My partner had literally grabbed his gun and was getting ready to confront them, but since it seemed to have moved on, nothing came of it. I cannot stress enough how deep these woods were. We had explored the day before, and I had scratches from twigs and branches. It was so dense. The fact that there was someone alone wandering around talking to themselves in the middle of the night without a light or camp is so freaky, and I still get chills whenever I think about it. The next morning we investigated and didn't find any tracks, but there was a really haphazardly lit fire, charred remains in the middle of a forest slash logging road about a mile up, and was still kind of warm. I know there is a small town of about 150 people, a good 10 miles south of where we were camped, so maybe it was drunken teenagers. We were almost touching the Yakima Indian Reservation, and the logging roads were still actively used, but still, it was so bizarre. I was camping in Northern California, at the very tippy top of California, deep in the woods at a reservoir. I had to go poop really bad early in the morning before the sun was up and there were no bathrooms. So I walked down the trail and found a little spot isolated away from the trail next to a blackberry bush and an outcrop of water from the reservoir. I heard some crashing in the tree line and it just started to become slightly light out. I peeked over the blackberry bush and not 40 feet away from me was a huge bear around 500 pounds. I tried to sneak away, but as I stepped back, and I kid you not, I stepped on a twig that snapped. This bear and I both instantly turn our heads towards one another and lock eyes. I attempted to make myself look big and make noise, but the bear didn't budge. In fact, he started to walk towards me. So many things were racing through my mind. The number one being there's no way I'm curling up into a ball and allowing this monstrosity of a giant bear to mess with me. So I crouched down as low as I could behind the blackberry bush so he couldn't see me and started running as fast as I could while crouched and squatting down. My thought process was that if he couldn't see me run, maybe he wouldn't chase if I was already kind of far away before he actually saw me running over the blackberry bush. It worked. He pursued around the blackberry bush for around 20 feet and decided it wasn't worth it and allowed me to escape. I honestly thought I was gonna be breakfast for this bear and that would have been the end of me. Back in high school, the only place to be alone was a spot my boyfriend and I scoped out in the middle of the woods. It required driving out to a pretty remote area via long dirt roads many miles from town, opening a very heavy gate and then driving a few miles on a narrow one lane dirt road to a dead end clearing by the lake. Then you could park and neck as the kids say. A lot of the other teens knew about it, but the spot and path could only be used by one car at a time. One night we drove out, opened the fence, drove past our spot, and I remember that there was no moon that night, so the only illumination was our headlights. We park and start to do our thing, when I start to get a really strange feeling. I told him I was feeling weird, and he agreed that it was a little extra creepy without the moon. So we turned the car back on and drove back out the way we came. We did not come across any other cars or see any other vehicles. On the way back, we were driving slowly in silence with just our headlights lighting up the trees. When on the right side of the road, I saw a figure dressed entirely in white. He was just standing there with no flashlight standing on the side of the road. He could have touched the car as we went by. That's how close I spotted him. Convinced, 
I was just crazy, I said nothing. But when we got back to the fence, it was closed and latched. Someone had closed it behind us. Whoever it was had to have been on foot, because there was no car and no one on the dirt lane road. On foot, in the middle of the woods, with no light. My poor high school boyfriend just about crapped himself, but bravely got out, flung the fence open, got back in the car trembling, and we got back to his parents' house. And I finally blurted out that I saw a man on the side of the road. He blanched out saying, and he was wearing, oh, white robes, right? He said he saw him too. He agreed that if the man had a flashlight or any kind of light source, he would have seen it a mile away down the straight dirt path. He said he saw the man watching us in the rearview mirror as we drove away, just standing, watching. Neither of us could figure out what happened that night. We've been there a dozen times, and nothing like that has ever happened again. We'd been out there a dozen times and nothing ever happened. But we've never been back, nor spoke of it again. Hey guys, it's Mort here. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed tonight's stories. A huge thanks to my members and patrons whose names are on screen. And if you'd like to join the ranks and have an Android phone so that you can be part of the beta test program, feel free, but there's no obligation. And remember, it will be coming out at some point in the near future anyway. Um, so yeah, thank you to everyone. I hope you enjoyed tonight's stories. I certainly did. Um, yeah, these kind of stories, Deep Woods are fun. I think I've nearly run out for the month, so I hope you've got your fill, because we've been doing a fair few of them this last week. Um, if anyone has ever experienced anything creepy or spooky or downright horrifying, feel free to let me know and send it over to me. But for now, I think I'm going to sign off. So stay awesome, everyone, and I'll see you in the next one.